It's possible to find uh, graphical solutions to functions, uh, in other words, just using a graph to solve things. And uh, I'm going to give you a few hints, uh, tips and tricks for how to do that. So first of all, um, the first step I like to do is to graph the two well, or more, I guess, two or more um, functions. These could be graphs. So that'll be sort of the, the first step. And the next step then would be, well, we have to find where they intersect. So find where they meet or intersect. And that's at least a really straightforward way to do these uh, graphical solutions. So I'm going to give you a practical example. I think it always helps to do that. Uh, so I made one up here that's uh, if f of x is x squared plus x minus 2. I've used this example before. But I'm making f of x be this, and I've got a new function, so something called g of x, which is negative x plus 4. And I'm asking at what values of x does f of x equal g of x? And this may sound really complicated, but basically what I'm asking to do is set this equation equal to this one. So if I want to do that, I can take a look at that. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say f of x equals g of x. So that means uh, I'm going to say x squared plus x minus 2, that's f of x, equals g of x, which is minus x plus 4. Now, basically, I'm trying to solve this. Um, there's a lot of ways of looking at this, okay? So when you're actually trying to graph things or even just solve a system of equations like this, there are so many ways to solve this. You could actually manipulate and move these over and end up finding um, the zeros of this quadratic. But the, the way I'd like to show you for right now is just by graphing it. So we're going to graph each of these equations, like I suggested. Remember I suggested, let's graph the two functions, and then we'll find where they intersect. So this is probably the most straightforward, easy way to do it. I think it's still helpful to look at. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator. Um, I guess I have to move it around here just so I can see what's going on. So the first equation I want to graph is x squared plus x minus 2. If I graph that, it should look like a quadratic because it's got an x squared term and it's, uh, there's a positive 1 in front of it, so it should be opening upwards. Let's see if it does that. I hope so. Hooray. Now we have to look at this other graph here, this um, g of x, which is negative x plus 4. So I'm going to graph a second equation. And I want negative x plus 4. Now if I graph that, now I can also predict what this one looks like. There's no power of 2 here, so this is not a quadratic. This is actually a straight line graph. I know that it has a y-intercept of positive 4 and has a slope of negative 1. So it's going to look something like this. You know, on my, you know, It's going to do this on the screen, I hope. So if I do graph, now it's going to show me both graphs. Now the question is asking, what x value uh, is it when this graph equals that graph? Well, I can do that. I mean, I can actually solve for it. Let me just uh, do a little screen capture here. Maybe this will be useful uh, to look at so I can point at stuff here. So I've just uh, captured it. That means I put it here to a new place, but I want to bring it to my last thing. So just bear with me for a second. There we go. So here, array for technology. Um, I can take a look at this and what this really means. Now, which, I mean, I suppose if this was a test or something, you'd have to label your X and you want to label your Y. Whoops, it's hard to see. Um, now you have to label your graphs too. So which graph is which? Uh, the straight line one is G of X. Whoops, I did a really weird x there. So maybe I better try that again. So we've got uh, g of x here. And this curvy one, this quadratic, that's f of x. So when does this curvy one be the same value as this one right here? Well, that's where they meet or where they intersect. So I can take a look at that. And in this case, there's two points here and here. Those are the points I'm interested in. I want the x values for these. I could estimate it, 1, 2, 3, minus 3-ish, right? It's not exactly minus 3, it's not minus 4. It's somewhere between 3 and 4. And this is plus 1-ish. But I don't want ish, I want to know the real value. So again, I can ask my calculator, please help. So what I can do then is, uh, maybe I'll just clear the history here. 
I can ask it to calculate this. So I go to calc, this little blue calc, so that's second. Trace, that gives me that. And I want to find out where these two graphs intersect. Right, so I look at that, whoops, I went too far. So intersect. Now it's going to ask me, first curve, question mark. This is because maybe you have five different graphs on here and it wants to know which two graphs am I looking at? Because it can only do the intersection of two graphs. Um, so first curve, am I really on one of the curves? Sure, I mean, I can move my cursor around just to make sure. Am I really following this uh, curvy one? Yes, so I'll just press enter. What about the second curve? Am I on this one? Sure. By the way, if you ever need to change curves, just go up or down. It's actually going to sort of hop from one curve to the next. So I need to be on a second curve, so the, the straight line one. Look what it does, too. It tells you the equation of your graph there. That's y2, and this is y1. So that's pretty handy. But I wanted that one. That's my second curve, so I press Enter. And that says guess, question mark, because there's more than one intersection. So if I want the leftmost one, I need to put my cursor somewhat near the left point. That's probably easily good enough. I press enter and it tells me x is minus 3 point, uh, well it all depends on how many um, uh, digits I want, but let's just say I want uh, two decimal points. So minus 3.6, well let's follow a round up, so minus 3.65. So I'll say that's my first answer. So I need a pen I guess, here we go. So x equals minus 3.65. Now it's not exactly equal, so I'm going to put this little dot. That's normally what we do to denote, you know, pretty much equal to. It's not exactly this, but it's pretty close. And the other one, if I want that one, I do the same thing. So hopefully you can guess that I do second calc and ask it for the intersection. If I'm really, uh, I want to be quicker, what I can do is just press five. And that's even quicker than just scrolling up or down. So first curve, am I really on the first curve? Let's see. Well, I'm on one of them. Sure, that's one of them. Second curve, yes, I'm on that one. And then it asks me for a guess, so I have to put my cursor this time to the right. If I don't go too far. Seems my little emulator is a little bit slow sometimes. So I press enter. And it's gonna tell me, well, this is 1.65 or so. So that will say that's the second value here. Okay, so x is roughly 1.65. And before I said minus three-ish and one-ish. Well, this is a little bit better. So this is how we can actually find these solutions here. Now what we can do if we want is uh, take a look at another example. So here we wanna solve this equation, 2x equals x squared minus three. Now one way to do it would be to, of course, do the same thing we just did. Do a graph of each of these. And if I had to estimate the graph, if I wanted to graph each of them, I could actually do it. Um, and if you remember how graphs work and translations, let's see, this is x squared, but this minus three uh, means that it moves this graph down by three. So an x squared normally does something like this, but I'd have to move it down by three. So it would be something like this, you know, assuming that's minus three. I'm not exactly sure how wide it goes. I'm just sketching roughly. So that's this graph. And this graph right here is 2x. So that would be a straight line with no y-intercept. Well, not no y-intercept, but a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 2. That means every one unit I go over, I go up 2. So it's a straight line that's actually steep. So it'll be something like, I don't know, like this. Now the thing is, I'd have to find again where these two graphs would meet. And that's how I would do it. But I want to do it a different way this time. I could, I could easily do what we just did. That would get me the answer. But I actually want to show you that you can do this in other ways. So in this case, what I'm going to do is actually just rearrange this equation. So I'm going to say, well, instead of this, I'm going to move this 2x to the right. So that means I have to um, subtract it. Now there's going to be nothing left on the left, so that sounds weird. There's going to be nothing remaining on the left, so I'll have 0 equals. And I'm going to leave my x squared there. I like things to go in descending terms of x's. So x squared, this is going to be minus 2x. And this minus 3 is still hanging out here. So what I've just done, I've just moved this over. Now what I can do then is find the zeros of this. So like we've been doing before, I can find the zeros or roots, or you can also call them the x-intercepts. I'm doing what we've been doing before. 